Hey, Char. What's up? Life ain't nothing but a roller coaster. Sip, sip, and on Coca Cola. Mm. Okay, so uh, we're gonna look at Raji, an ancient epic official Nintendo Switch. Tra oh, I didn't realize this was, for, this was for Nintendo Switch. And we're gonna look at the trailer, and we're going to look at gameplay footage. Cool. So stick around for both. <laughs> okay, here we go. That's what Peter McKinnon used to do all the time. Oh. You do all these sound effects. I'm like, that is so stupid. I'm gonna do that too. Okay. <laughs> Awake, my child. Oh. They managed to hit 60 frames for this game, which is really impressive get, considering it's a Nintendo Switch game. So, because I mean, Nintendo Switch has its limitations and if you can hit 60 frames on it, it's dope. This game actually bears a resemblance to a Tomb Raider game of this style. Uh-huh. Where you, like, it's a small, oh my god, did you see the size of that creature? Jesus. <laughs> Bravery is only ever found where fear is strongest. This shall play out as it should. Oh my god, this has like never ending story vibes too. Now and watch. Wow, it's already out. It's out now? Oh, it's coming soon to the other systems as oh, well. Oh cool, I can get it for Nintendo Switch right now. That's perfect. Alright. That was smart on Nintendo's part. I mean, I don't know if it was like built from the ground up to be compatible with Nintendo Switch, and that's where they were first aiming for. And then later on, it like that some deals were made so that it could be ported over to PS4, Xbox One, and PC as well. Mm -hmm. Or if it was always meant to be a multi-platform game. No idea. The fact that they're advertising this at 60 frames per second and they're saying Nintendo Switch means you're gonna get 60 frames on Nintendo Switch. And that's awesome. Like, that is cool. Because that for me has been a long time desire with all of my video games. That was the thing that frustrated me when I got to PS4 and Xbox One and noticed that a lot of games were still capped at 30. It was just annoying to me. And so it gives you a nice smooth, like just creamy smooth gameplay. It's also more responsive because of the higher frame rate. It's nice. There was a Nintendo Switch game that came out some time ago it was also, I think, for other systems. I can't remember the name of it, but it didn't do well because the Nintendo Switch port had real bad stuttery issues, but it was, a, it was about a kid on an island. I had a long interest in it, and then, yeah, those, those frame rate issues really hindered it. There's a Tomb Raider game that's kind of like that, where it's like that far scale where you're looking at the character really small. Yeah. Kind of like um, Diablo 3. Diablo 3 has the same sort of thing where you're looking at the character smaller and you're running around and doing all kinds of epic stuff. It's a stylistic choice. That's a different kind of game. It's like a platformer. What they're doing with it is actually creative. It sort of reminds me of the old days with um, like Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, where you have these larger than life creatures that you're battling against while maintaining that sort of scale. And because of the scale of your character, it makes everything else look just proportionately huge. Or I guess proportionately huge. Uh, kind of like the game we mentioned earlier, Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. Your character relative to everything else is much smaller and it makes everything else just look epic. And the details are really nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the animation style, the colors, the story. Like, I love that it's set in ancient India. You've got a female hero who, you know, she's out there trying to save her little brother and all that. And the thing that was really captivating to me was the storytelling element of using the shadow puppets. Mm. Now, I'm not as familiar with shadow puppets in Indian culture. I know that like for me growing up in Indonesia, Wayang Kulit was a huge thing. Like shadow puppets are a massive part of Asian culture. And I loved all of the little Asian 
nods that are in there. And of course, it being Indian, there's going to be a bunch of Indian mythology and all of that, which I just find incredibly interesting. And I love that this is becoming fodder for video game storytelling, you know, to kind of share that with the world. I hope that it is accurate in terms of its portrayal of Indian mythology and history and, mm -hmm. and whatever, because it, it's a great way of introducing that to people of all ages. And it's good that they're releasing it for Nintendo Switch first, because when, you know, travel resumes, we're always looking for something cool and different. I'm gonna go search for it, like, once we're done shooting. It looks like a, a cute game. It looks fun. It looks like something I could get into. Like, it's not too difficult, hopefully. It's not too challenging. Not too, too challenging. Like, just challenging enough. There's, like, a storyline. It looks pretty. The, um, I, and I want to support. I don't think you're giving this good enough credit. I think these games are more challenging than, than you anticipate. It's probably way more challenging and I'm yeah. probably going to have a really hard time, but I, yeah. I want to try. There's the one other game that I immediately thought of, which is uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles India. It did kind of remind me of that with like all of the, you know, climbing yeah. and stuff. It, it made me think of that. But... All right, let's get into this one right here. This is for the Switch. The fortress will be a challenge for her. Oh, but she is growing into her power. I think Mahabala Sura and his demons will soon regret the capture of her brother. You can hear like her anklets every time she walks. <sighs> what are you gonna do, girl? Jump, jump. Yeah, it's definitely got that Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Uh, side scrolling. Side scrolling. Focus, Durga. If Mahabala Sura triumphs here, then what difference will it make? <sighs> you must accept that some things are beyond the ability of mortals to inflict. It's kind of fun, like this whole thing about you get the sense of the gods watching her, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a mortal, and they're just discussing her and the grand scheme of things. It often happens in like mythology, we're like pawns in the game. And they're just watching us, just like, mm, what's gonna happen? So interesting, the soap opera of human life. I think he's dead. You hear the Bengals? Yeah, I said that. Like every time she walks, you can hear her yeah. anklets, I think. I was looking for that other game for a second because I just want to know what it is. Slide. Oh god, everyone's dead. Do you have a weapon? Maybe you should pick one up. I like the music. What's interesting is you're also starting out as this girl who seems... Vulnerable? Vulnerable and helpless. Yeah. She's got some pretty dope skills. Yeah. They're moving around though. Look at that. Like, like you were saying, the scale of it. It's kind of wild. Okay, what you gonna do? Ring the bell? Ding dong, who's home? It must be PC gameplay. Yeah, it says tab and E, so it's, it's PC gameplay. Oh. Yeah. It's a mouse. Yeah. I mean, it's still gonna be cool on the Switch. They designed it in such a way to be scalable to oh, okay. different systems. Okay, so you can like choose. This is kind of like Final Fantasy, where you're like, okay, I'm gonna upgrade my skills. <laughs> Before you went to Shiva, you went to live in the mountains, to fast and to pray, and he could not help but fall for your devotion. 
Uh oh, here we go. Yay, let's fight some things. Come on. That ground effect is interesting. Yeah. Don't let him hit you. Come on! Don't fall out of the ring. Supposed to be a god or a goddess? No, Durga is a goddess. The, the gods and goddesses are talking right now. Oh gosh, gotcha. she's I a human. Will not see the demons win, nor the twisted mystic who leads them. What he did to Bhumi Devi was a terrible thing. Who knows what Mahabalasura plans oh. now? Shadow effects are nice. Uh oh, oh, more. Oh, that's cool. Bound to the ring? No, whenever the bad guys appear, the, the ring appears. So I imagine you can't go yeah. out of bounds, otherwise you'll die. Nice move. Is there some sort of like health bar? Is that the, the circle around them is the health? No. Oh, uh, yes. I think for, for so, that. yeah. Yes, yes, and yes. Her. Yeah, you're right. She's, she's getting damaged, too. Dead, dead. Get that guy. Go on. Interesting creatures. Yeah. I'm like, you missed. Oh, that's it. Cool. Yeah, there's a game called Baldur's Gate back in the day that I loved that had this sort of same vibe. And it was like smooth gameplay, top-down sort of perspective, platformer, really, really fun. It was a game that you'd be into because it's a genre of like The Witcher and whatnot. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that same genre of, um, of fantasy adventure. If you guys never played Baldur's Gate, it's really cool. I can see getting into this game, it can be it can be really fun. And yeah. just exploring the world, learning the world. What I like about this that uh, separates it from your average 3D game today is it requires some work on the user's part, some work on the game player's part mm -hmm. to sort of use your imagination. While it's like giving you this world and, and the effects are nice and whatnot, because of the remoteness of it, you sort of have to fill in the blanks. Kind of like what you do with movies back in the day. Like right. visual effects weren't amazing in its early days. And so you sort of had to do work as the audience and, and like just use your imagination to sort of fill that in. Whereas now movies are sort of doing all the work for you. Games likewise are sort of doing all the work for you. Whereas games like this, you sort of imagine what that would be like on the ground level and like being this girl and fighting and whatnot and growing yeah. your powers and coming up in, against these other creatures. And I used to have that sort of same sort of feeling when I played Starcraft. It's like you sort of imagined what that all looked like from the ground level. And they would show you cut scenes and whatnot to give you a sense. Most of the work was sort of on you to use 
your imagination while you're doing this real-time strategy. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really cool. I like it. I'm excited by it. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. It's hot in here, so we're gonna close this video real quick. Peace out.